In this video, we will be looking at the wild card Kirill Alexenko. He is the eighth player in the candidates. But firstly, who is he? He is 22 years old. He is ranked 39th in the world, a rating of 2698 and a peak rating of 2715. His breakthrough event this year was doing so well in the World Cup, beating Hare Krishna 2 0 and also achieving two draws against Dingley Ren, but then losing to him in the rapid stage of the World Cup. In this video, I will look at his best white victory in the last year, and also his statistics against the candidates. First up, here is his white repertoire tree. Out of 94 games, he has played E4 89 times. He's played D4 5 times, but all of those games were rapid in blitz games during the World Cup. Kirill Alexenko has not played Wang Hao. He played Anish Giri when they were both much lower rated, so that doesn't really count. He has played Maxime vachier lagrave three times. The bottom one is a draw, so that doesn't count. But MVL did beat him in Gibraltar and also online in the Pro League Chess.com. Against MVL, Alexenko is minus one. He has played Nepomniachi twice in the Pro League Chess.com and in the World Blitz. Both of these games are not classical games, so it's okay to not count these two as serious games. Next up, he has played Alexander Grishuk three times. He lost to Grishuk back in May 2017 in the Russian Championship and in the World Blitz and a draw in the FIDE Grand Swiss Chess.com. This was the event in which Wang Hao qualified. Hence, overall, just looking at Classical, which is just the Russian Championship game, he is minus one against Grishuk. Against Ding Li Run, he is all even. Two draws in the World Cup in the Classical games and then 2-0 to Ding in the Rapid Games. So he is all even against Ding. And against Caruana, he's never played him. Now I will be looking at his victory against Hare Krishna in the World Cup. Alexenko versus Hare Krishna. But firstly, who is Pentala? At the moment, he is ranked 27th in the world. He's from India, with a current classical rating of 2719 and he is 33, 11 years older than his young Russian opponent. The game began, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, the Italian game, castle, knight f6, d3, d6, c3, a6, giving the option to tuck the bishop back from c5 to a7, a4. Gaining space on the queen side, also stopping black expanding with b5. And if white wants to get another pawn on the queen side to get space, he can go b4 later. h6. Stopping bishop g5 in the future. Rook e1, castle, h3. Rook e8 and a5. This is the beginning of Alexenko's strategy. By putting a pawn on a5, this knight cannot go to a5. Now, why would black want to do that later? We'll see. Bishop a7, just anticipating this move. Just getting out the way of any future attack. Queen b3. This is white strategy. Knight a5 is not possible now. The queen on b3 attacks the b7 pawn. White is making it very difficult for black to get this bishop out. Queen b3 and bishop c4 attack the f7 pawn. So black plays queen e7 to defend. Bishop e3. Trading off black's best piece, you could say. Take, take. Queen on b3, it still attacks b7, so black plays rook b8. Getting ready to trade. If the bishop goes to e6 and it comes off for white's superior bishop, then I think black has a good game. It's like black is trying to copy white's strategy. Because white just played bishop e3 to swap off black's best piece. However, he is not in time. Because white strikes in the center with d4. b5 played. 
Bishop e6, it's not possible anymore because d5, just forking knight and bishop. b5, getting space on the queen side, trying to resolve some problems. White en passant, a takes b6, c b6, knight d2. And looking at the queen side pawns, they look a bit weak. So knight d2 played. First question actually is why not bishop takes a6? Because of rook a8. And if queen takes b6, then knight b8. Retreating moves, but it is worth it. Black is using the pin on the a file, and this bishop will drop next. Back to the game, knight d2 played, so a6 can be a target in the future. b5 and bishop f1. Note, knight a5 is not possible because the queen is on the b file, attacking the rook after rook takes a5. b5, bishop f1, queen c7, and this is where white is taking over. Even though the game began as an Italian game, it now looks more like a Spanish because of the pawn structure on the queen side with a6 and b5. Blocking up the center with d5, knight e7, c4. b4, queen a4. Note, you don't want to take because after queen c4, y is coming in on the queen side. These two pawns are just too weak. If queen c4, knight c4. And this knight is perfect. Defending b2, attacking d6, this rook can swing over to a3, put some pressure, this rook continues to do a great job on the half open a file. Back to the game, b4 played, queen a4, knight d7, queen a5. White wants to go into an end game in which he has a really nice position. Take, take, f5. Hare Krishna tries to get counterplay, fair enough, he's got to break up the center. Knight b3, stopping black's knight coming into c5. If this was played on the move before, not a problem, because knight b3. So f5, knight b3, take, and knight d2. No need to waste time taking with the rook, because after knight d2, you can take knight e4 next. Knight f6, protecting e4, but leaving the c5 square unguarded. Knight e4, take, take, bishop f5, rook e1, bishop c2, knight d2, knight f5, and rook takes a6. If you go rook a8, you can put this rook to a1. The pressure will be building. It's too much. Knight f5, rook takes a6, rook d8, defending d6, rook a1, knight d4, rook a7. White is a pawn up, but you still have to win it, and I think Alexenko in this game shows great technique. Rook f8, rook a6. White has two rooks on the A-file, but his plan is to transform this advantage. What is better than two rooks on a file? Two rooks on the seventh rank, and this is what Alexenko achieves. He uses the B-rook to defend D8. Now, rook B6, B3, rook B7. It just looks like it's all over, but Hare Krishna has G5. And it is not checkmate in free moves because there is a bishop on c2. So just to show you guys the familiar checkmating pattern. Rook g7 check, king h8, rook h7 check. Imagine there's no bishop on c2, king g8 and rook mate. This is not possible after g5, but Alexenko finds a nice way to break through. It is about time this Spanish-Italian bishop gets back in the game. Or should I say this Italian Spanish bishop? Because it started out as an Italian and the pawn structure showed it looked more of a Spanish. So white creates a breakthrough with c5. Giving up the c pawn to activate the bishop on f1 but also weakening the black e5 pawn. Take bishop c4, threatening d6 discovered check. Also bishop on c4 attacks the pawn on b3. Rook f6, rook e7. King f8, rook takes e5. Rook f7, let's keep rooks on. Keep the attack going. King g7, f3. Planning knight e4, perhaps the king can come to f2 as well. Rook d7, allowing white 
a nice way to proceed with d6, a discovered attack on the rook from the bishop. Rook f8, and rook takes c5. Rook d8, rook d5. Protecting the tremendous asset on d6, knight f5, and now. Notice, in the last five moves, white got two pawns, but black finally ends up rounding the d6 pawn. Bishop takes b3, knight e3, rook e5, take on d6, take, take, four pawns against two pawns. Rook takes e3 is the beginning of the end. Rook takes d2, bishop takes, and rook b3. Four versus two, no chance. h5, h4. Take, it doesn't matter because the doubled h pawns are useless. King h2 first, rook c1, just a cheapo here, you can't go forward with the king because rook h1 mate rook b4 played and here hara krishna resigned if we continue a bit white is planning to take the h4 pawn so black should attack one of white's pawns the problem is if you go after the b pawn white will win two for one rook takes h4 rook takes b2 and rook takes h5 and this is an easy win if rook takes h4 and you play king g6 not a problem b4 3 versus 1, and this is also a victory for white. If you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like and subscribe to the channel at the same time. Check out one video here and another video over here. Thank you so much for watching.